Hello and welcome to another Farbank Fly Fishing School episode. This episode focuses on a selection of essential casts that all river anglers should know. Some of the casts in this episode allow anglers to fish in situations that they wouldn't normally be able to with the regular overhead cast, while other casts create better ways to present the fly to the fish and increase the odds of getting it to eat. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the essential casts that all river fly fishers should know. So why do we look at other river casts? Well, a lot of people ask me, how do you become a better angler? And very simply, you become a better caster. Not only do you become a better overhead caster, but you learn casts that put you in situations where other people don't fish. Now, if you know the regular overhead cast, you're fine. You can cast in most situations, but there are plenty of river areas where this will not do. If you need to get your fly under an overhanging tree, your overhead cast is gonna fail miserably. So for that, you need to learn a cast called a side cast. And this whole chapter and episode is all about the different casts you need to fly fish a river successfully. The side cast is a great one for getting underneath trees. I mentioned that. There's also a roll cast. You need to learn a roll cast. One of the most staple casts as a river angler that you should have in your books is a roll cast. It's a wonderful cast for casting when you have obstructions behind you and you can make no form of back cast. Those casts get you out of situations. But in addition to that, there's a bunch of casts that actually help create better presentations and better ways of fishing your flies. There's a cast called a reach cast. We're gonna take a look at a reach cast. It's a cast where you reach and put a fly line in a different position from where it would be with a regular overhead cast. There's a cast called an aerial mend. We'll take a look at the aerial mends. Those are ways of throwing lines into mend so they land on the water already with a mend. And there's a very important group of casts called the slack line casts, which are ways of creating slack when you make the cast and making the fly line land with slack. So without further ado, let's go down and take a look at all of these beautiful casts that will help you as a river angler. The first of the essential other river casts I'm gonna look at is a cast called the side cast. This is a cast that helps you get into situations where you can't get in with your regular overhead cast. As the name suggests, the side cast is a cast down on the side. Instead of making your overhead cast over your head, you're just gonna make a cast side to side like this. Keep your rod horizontal, back and forth. That's what a side cast is. Now, why would you do a side cast? Well, anytime you want your line to go low, the side cast is vital. So it's really good when you have a tree overhanging a river like this. You make an overhead cast and try and get your line under that tree, you'll land on top of it every single time. In this situation, you want to get the cast low. So under that tree, you can see do a nice little side cast right under the tree. That's why you use side cast. Now the tree might not be in front of you all the time. Sometimes you're going to be fishing, say up river here and the tree's behind you. So if you do an overhead cast, then you're going to hit the tree on the back cast. So here, even though there's nothing in front of me up here, I still need a side cast because the tree's behind me. So you're going to just, it's a great cast to keep that low. You want to practice this cast forehand, which is where you're casting normal style, like across your body like this. But also, hey, there might be an obstruction here. There might be a tree here. So I also want to be able to cast backhand. This is the backhand side cast. This is the forehand side cast. So again, you want to practice these casts so that you understand how to get out of any situation, because someday you will have a situation where you can't do the regular side. You need to do the backhand side. So those are the casts. To do the casts, well, let's see how you do it. First of all, your grip and stance are gonna change slightly. Your normal cast, you hold your thumb on the top of the rod, the reel hanging down. With a regular side cast, the forehand side cast, you're gonna turn it so your knuckles are down. The reel is facing the target. You're gonna line your shoulders up with where you want to go. So don't stand open like this. Turn your shoulders to line up. And then you're just gonna make something like a regular overhead cast on this sideways horizontal plane, and you'll get pretty good accuracy that way and a good control of that. When you want to do the backhand version, 
you're going to turn the reel around so your knuckles are up, reel still facing the target, shoulders aligned with the target, and you're going to make the backhand version the same idea with that rod tip traveling horizontally. Really, that's all there is to it. You want to keep it horizontal. You want to make sure your rod tip does travel horizontal. Try and think of your rod tip being lower and or parallel with the reel. You don't want to do this as a side cast with a rod high because that won't give you a side cast. That will give you a kind of a 45 degree loop. It's a fairly short line cast. You're never going to get a lot of distance with it. And one of the cruxes of making a good side cast is the speed your rod travels. You have to have fairly quick, succinct strokes like this because your line is so close to the water that it can drop into the water and take out all the energy. So you need to have fast casting. You can make side casts with about 10 feet of line would look something like this. If I went to about 20 feet of line, the main thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my speed. I'm really gonna speed up this cast because my line is still really close to the water, but it's longer. So I gotta have a lot more speed. So remember that as you change lengths of side cast, you do want to change the speed that your strokes develop. And really that's the side cast. As I said, it's a very essential cast. One of the things you'll find is a problem with the side cast. Accuracy is really hard. Sure, distance is a problem. You can't make long cast with it because your line is so close to the water, but accuracy is pretty hard. And you can imagine, imagine I'm casting to the camera. If I make a regular overhead cast like this, it's very easy to track straight towards the camera but you turn that rod on a side plane, it's a lot harder. You're cutting across. So your accuracy does become more of an issue with a side cast. But guess what? You know what they say about practice? This is one of those things where you just practice. Practice your forehand, practice your backhand, practice at a target, get used to making your side cast and controlling your side cast. And soon you'll have a lovely cast you can add to your armory and be a more successful river angler as a result. And one more cast that falls into that same category of being able to get into new situations is a cast called the roll cast. So let's go and take a look at what a roll cast is. The other essential river cast to know is called the roll cast. The roll cast, you cannot fish a river without a roll cast. Simply, there are gonna be times, plenty of times, where you're gonna have a tree behind you, or a bank, or a bridge, or a person, and you can't make a regular cast that has a line going behind you, the back cast. In those situations, you need to know a cast called a roll cast. And a roll cast is simply a cast that really has no back cast, just a forward cast. So perfect if something's behind you. Before you actually learn the roll cast, let's just show you a couple of things like a good one and what a bad one looks like. A good roll cast is very easy. It unrolls with efficiency, it unrolls in the air, it unrolls with a parallel nice narrow loop and it drops to the water. No effort, parallel to the water, drops easily. A bad roll cast, just so you can identify what you're doing if you're doing it wrong, it rolls along the water. The loop is, tends to be wide a lot of people put a lot of effort into a roll cast. There shouldn't be any effort into a roll cast. And above all, it shouldn't land with a pile of slack unless you want that to happen. Unless that's part of your technique. Generally speaking, a good roll cast should land in a nice straight line with a perfectly formed loop out in front of you. And to do that, you've got to know how to make a roll cast. And just before we go into how to make a roll cast, I want to give you a little bit of terminology, which we'll be using throughout this little chapter here. Things to observe. The terminology, number one, is what's called the D-loop. The D-loop is simply the line that hangs from the rod and that's behind the rod. That's called a D-loop. It hangs behind the rod. It's essential to have a D-loop with a roll cast. Another thing to know about is the line that's actually on the water in front of you. That is called the anchor. It's gripping the water. It's called the anchor. So you've got the D-loop behind and the anchor in front. And then the last bit in between those two is you have what's called point P, and point P is where the line touches the water. A tiny little ripple that's formed where the line hanging touches the water, and that ripple is point P. We're gonna talk all about those as we go through this cast. The last part of kind of understanding this whole thing is to know um, you've got to use a line that's the right type of line for it. You've got to have a line that's got weight at the back. It's very hard to roll cast where you've got line weight at the front. A lot of lines designed these days have weight at the front because they're great overhead casting lines. So if you want to master roll casting with a one-handed rod, get a line that weight is at the back end. 
And at Rio, we make one called a single-handed spay, and it is absolutely, it's what I've got on here, and is my go-to line for teaching and using whenever I want to make a roll cast with a one-handed rod. And then we need to start backwards. We're going to start with what's called the forward cast. So let's take a little look at the essence of the forward cast. To make the roll cast easy to understand, I've wrapped the, wrapped the line around the rod here. I don't want you to focus on the line, I want you to focus on the rod. And very simply, a forward stroke is an important thing to get right before you even worry about the rest of the roll cast. Let's take a look at a good forward cast. The forward cast is always going to start from the key position. Key position is where your hand holding the rod is about level with your shoulder, and there's a little opening at your wrist here, a little gap. A good forward stroke has this long move, and then you close the gap with speed. Okay, here's good. And a bad one, kind of the one a lot of people start off with, they don't quite get the muscle memory right. As they come forward, the wrist starts closing, the rod starts rotating. So this is bad, and this is good. And you can see it in your loops. When you make a good cast, you get that loop parallel to the water and it unrolls in the air. And if you do this early rotation, it rolls along the water and lands in a pile of slack. So get your forward stroke right first. It's very important. You can just do it like I am, wrapping the line around the rod. Once you've got a good forward stroke, let's, the next thing is kind of build on those, that, that terminology we talked about, the D-loop. The significance of the D-loop is it's what makes your rod bend. So if you make a cast and your D-loop is in front of the rod, there is no load. It's not going to work. It's essential that you tilt the rod back. There's some D-loop behind you. That's going to load your rod and make an effortless cast. We talked about the anchor. That's the line on the water. Well, very simply, the line on the water has got to be in front of you. You don't want a line on the water behind you. It's got to be in front of you. And in a, in a nutshell, the less line that's on the water, when you make a forward cast, the better your roll cast will be. And really, the other thing we talked about, the point P, that's a very, very important one. Point P should always be in front of where you're wading. When you make a forward stroke, point P should always be in front. So here's one, I'm going forward, point P's there. Perfect. If point P's behind you, like back there, when you go forward, you get that long spray noise, the line loses all its energy, and that's very simply because point P went behind you. So your good roll cast has got to have a nice D-loop, point P in front of you, a small anchor, and a good forward stroke. And really those are the terminologies that we talked about, but perhaps the other most important thing, perhaps the most underrated part of this roll cast is what's called the, roll, uh, the train tracks or the rail tracks. And this is an imagination thing. Simply, if your fly line's on the water, the anchor, and it's pointing in one direction, your forward stroke should be absolutely parallel to that line. Parallel, like a rain track, train track, or a ladder, some people call it. But if you have a forward stroke that is parallel to that line on the water, you'll have a beautiful roll cast every single time. And if you diverge, if your train track, your rail track is facing one way, and you aim at a different place, you get a bad cast. So you've got to follow the train track, you've got to have a good D-loop, you have a small anchor, make sure point P's in front of you, have a lovely forward cast, and choose the right line, and you'll soon be a master at the roll cast. Those two are great river casts as a cast, it gives you up more space. But there's also some really neat casts to use as an angler that help you fish the water better, gives you more chance of catching a fish. And the first one of those we're going to look at is called the reach cast. And it's called the reach cast because very simply, you're going to make a reach. You're going to aim your cast at where you want the fly to land. And then when you make that last cast, you can simply reach your rod to one side. You can reach it to the right. You can equally reach it. And there are plenty of times when you reach it to the left. So that's a reach cast. You can see what happens is I make my cast and then I reach. And I'll come on to why you do that in a moment, but let's just look at how and the kind of the key things to do. First key thing is aim at your target. Really important. Sounds logical, but there's some of these casts you don't actually aim at the target. This one, you aim where you want your fly to land. You do need some slack hanging down. In terms of this cast, you're going to make your forward stroke and then watch what's going to happen with my left hand. I'm going to let the slack go 
and then reach. And the movement of the reach takes the slack up. That's essential. What you don't want to do is shoot the line and then reach, right? So you see the difference there. It's very important you should re release the slack and then reach. And a good little tip on that is let's say your reach moves the rod six feet. I want to make sure I have six feet of slack hanging down. Okay, so I'm going to make that reach cast the same one to the right here. Got my line lined up, aim at the fish, let the slack go reach there. If I do that, my fly lands where I want it to land. If I've only got two feet of slack hanging down and I make a six foot movement with my rod tip, I'm pulling that fly back four feet, so I'm pulling it off the target. So the amount of slack is pretty important there. Good little tip to have is make sure you have enough slack to move that rod whatever distance you're going to move the rod. So that's how you do it. Let's just take a look at a couple of situations now as why you would do it. And really there's three situations where I use this reach cast. The first one is a nice simple one when you're fishing up a grass bank and you're casting along close to that bank because you're looking for some bank feeders. If you make a regular ordinary overhead cast, your line's going to land on the grass bank or land really close to the grass bank. And what happens to that reach cast? When you make that reach cast, that reach cast lands the fly where you want it to, but the reach takes the line away from the bank and away from the grass and the snacks. Very cool. Another option, hey, let's imagine there's an obstacle like a rock or a boulder or something there and there's a fish behind it. If you cast straight at that fish, you're going to line on top of the rock and snag it. And so the reach cast is another very useful cast. You aim at the fish, you make your reach, you shoot your slack, and you reach around the obstacle. So that's another great one. But perhaps the most used one of all is when you're fishing river and you get a little bit more advanced as a fly fisher and you're fishing in two different current speeds. For example, let's say you're wading up a nice fast bit of current and the fish are lower, lying in the slower and you cast your fly into that slower current. What you want is you want your fly to drift beautifully at the same speed as that slow current, but because you're standing in the fast current, that fast current zips the line out at the wrong speed. So in this situation, when you make your regular cast, you land it in the slow current and reach your line into the slow current, your line comes back at the same speed and your fly comes back at the same speed as the current and it's much more natural for the fish. So that reach cast is a very essential cast. As I said, it's not more of a technical cast, but it's definitely a technical fishing cast. And that is an essential thing to add to your arm. Another useful fishing cast, very similar to the reach cast, is called the aerial mend. And the aerial mend, well, if you fish rivers, you know that you're gonna to have to put mend in your line plenty of times to get it to fish correctly. Well, an aerial mend is you make your line land with that mend in, not add it afterwards. Very useful cast, and we'll see why in a moment. First, how do you do it? Well, it's kind of like the reach cast. You're gonna make the same moves as the reach cast. You have a bit of slack here, you're going to aim your cast where you want your fly to land. You're going to do your reach cast, but you're going to move your rod out and back. And the out and back makes your line land in a curve, which is the mend. So your fly lands with a beautiful mend in it in the air. Hence the name, the aerial mend. It's a pretty easy cast to do. Your rod doesn't go up and down. It just goes out and back. And the couple of things you want to practice is how to get big mends and little mends. And that is literally how big is your out and how little is your out. So here, if I want to do a big aerial mend, I'm going to do something like this. Target my spot, shoot the line, big out, big back. That's a huge mend I've put into the line. And sometimes you want a little bit more subtlety in the mend. You don't need to mend it so big because maybe you've got a narrow channel. And in those cases, you just make much more of a subtle out and back. It's out and back all you need and that puts a nice little mend into it. So that's how you influence the size of the mend. And the other thing you should practice is how to locate where your mend is. Like do you want your mend at the leader? Sometimes you do. Do you want the mend in the middle? Do you want the mend by the rod tip? So sometimes you're going to have to influence where you put the mend. And really that's a timing. That's a rhythm thing. When you finish your final forward cast and you stop the rod, the bigger the gap between you stopping the rod and moving it to the side, the closer to you the mend will be. So I want to put a mend in right by the leader and I go bing bong bang. It's literally bing bong bang. 
If I want that men to be closer to me, like the middle of the line, bing, bong, bang. And then if I want the men right under the rod tip, bing, bong, bang. Right? So that pause between the bing and the bong is the influences of men. I know it's silly language, but it kind of makes sense to me. I like that. And the other thing you should practice, you should be able to mend to the right side and you should be able to mend to the left side because you just don't know which direction you want to be putting mends into it. So that's the aerial mend. It's a great cast to practice. Now, why would you use it? Well, sometimes you might fish a sinking line. You cast your sinking line out, your line lands, starts sinking, and then you decide to try and mend. Well, you're too late because the line's underwater. It's sunk, so the mend is useless at that point. Way better to land with a mend and get it to fish correctly. But the one I alluded to in the beginning of this episode was the tricky fish. If there's a fish really tight to the bank and you cast a fly at the bank and you let your fly land, the action of you mending after it's landed will drag the fly. It'll either scare the fish or pull the fly out away from the bank. Way better to make the cast land with the right mend in it so the fly lands and it's gobbled up by that big trout. And that is a cast called the Aerial Mend. The final fishing cast I'd like to run over with you is not so much a cast, but a technique. It's, it's to create slack into your fly line when it lands. And there's a couple of reasons you want to do that. One is you're fishing downstream and you want slack so you get a natural drag-free drift. So you want your fly line to land with slack. You can also have slack when you fish upstream or across stream, across different current speeds. And when you have different current speeds, you, a bit of slack really helps your fly get a natural drift. So there are a couple of options when you're fishing where slack actually is a benefit. And there's lots of ways to put slack in. Perhaps the simplest way is the wiggle cast. And this is no more than a regular overhead cast that you do. You kind of make your false cast, line up your line with wherever you want to go. And then when you make your last cast, you're going to let the line go and move your rod side to side like this. And this side to side move here puts lovely S-bends in the line. The S-bends land on the water, the fly drifts beautifully until the S-bends have run out, and then you get drag. Very simple, creates a lot of slack, excellent way of putting slack in for those downstream presentations. Another option is what's called the parachute cast. It's not essentially a cast, but it's, a, it's an adaption of your overhead cast again. This is one of my favorite casts. This one I probably use more than any other way of creating slack in my line. I love to fish dry flies downstream, rising fish, targeting them, get a drag-free drift over them. And for this, I use the parachute cast the most. The essence of the parachute cast, two steps. Step one, you make a cast. You aim at your target, fish, rock, whatever it is. You lay your line down, but you lay your line longer than the target, but upstream of the target. And then the moment your line lands, you lift your rod up high like this and you drag your fly until it is straight upstream of the target. And now, as you lower the rod, that slack will allow it to drift straight over the target without any drag. That makes sense? So that's a nice, simple way of doing it. It does create drag. You could drown your fly, you could spook the fish, things like that can happen, but that's an easy way of getting the concept of this. Then, as you progress, you actually want to do all of that in one go. You want to make your overhead cast, you aim long, you aim upstream of the target, and as you make your last cast, you lift the rod before the line lands. And the moment the line lands, you do that same lowering here. And that lowering is giving slack, which gives you that lovely drag-free drift. What I like about this parachute cast is that when I lift my rod up to set the hook, I'm always on a tight line. That S-bend one, if a fish eats my fly when I've got lots of S-bends into it, it's very hard to set the hook because you've got to pull all those S-bends out before you set the hook. So what I like about this parachute cast is the fact that as I lower the rod, the same speed of the current there, lower, lower, drag free drift, fish eats it, I can set the hook very quickly because up is tension. So that's a really neat little cast. As I say, practice the first version first to get the concept and then try it all in one go. You'll like that one. Another way of creating slack, not a cast, it's kind of a cheat. You just get an extra bit of tippet. You're fishing a nine foot five X leader. And if you tie on say six feet of extra tippet, make it a 15 foot leader. A long, very fine leader doesn't turn over and land straight and present itself with a nice straight line. It falls in a mess. 
Not always do you want that. That's why you don't tend to fish these really long leaders. But in this situation, when we're talking about creating slack, this is a pretty good cheat. So get you on a regular leader, nine foot, 10 foot, whatever it is, add on five or six feet of really thin tippet, five X or six X. And when you make a regular cast, it's unlikely it'll turn over straight. So you get a nice bit of slack and a good drift. And then again, perhaps the last one, really another adaption of the overhead cast. This is a good one to get slack right at the very, very end near your leader. And that is you make your overhead cast. Beautiful, lovely overhead cast, looking at your target. But on your last cast, instead of putting your forecast out horizontal, you're going to put your forecast up. And it climbs, and it stalls, and it falls. And a pile of slack. Just what you want. Kind of looks like this. Make your regular cast. Line it up. Here's my last cast. Aim up high. Beautiful pile of slack. Got a lovely drag-free drift. Boom, bingo. And there's probably loads and loads of other ways. You, as a successful river angler, need to know how to create slack in your fly line. You need to know when to do it and how to do it and how to control it. And really, that's it. Those are a few extra, very useful casts you can use as a river angler. So there you have it, a collection of really useful casts that can help you fly fish in the river and maximize your success. Hopefully you've learned enough in this episode to seek out slightly more difficult places to fish and approach these areas with confidence. As always, I want to end this episode with a friendly reminder to do your part in keeping the river clean and the fish healthy. Look after the environment. Leave no trace of your visit to the water and please treat those fish that you catch with the utmost respect. I hope you enjoyed this episode and also hope to see you on the water one day putting your newfound casting skills to great use. Thanks a lot for watching.